Hi, I'm Rick Kaler. Thanks for joining me. While overall economic inflation has slowed over the past 18 months, health insurance costs keep going up. According to the latest survey by the Kaiser Family Foundation, a, which is a nonprofit organization that conducts research on health policy and related issues, the average annual premiums for single coverage have reached an average again of $8,400 a year, while family coverage now stands at an average cost of just under $24,000 a year. Preferred provider plans com uh, command a slightly higher cost with premiums of $8,900 for a single and just over $25,000 for family coverage. Now these figures represent a 7% increase from the previous year and a substantial 47% surge compared to 2013, 10 years ago. Meanwhile, the consumer price index during that time, which is a measure of general inflation, has risen by 30% in the last 10 years. So outpacing inflation by just over 50%. This raises two questions. One, are health insurance companies reaping excess profits while policyholders pay hefty premiums? And two, why don't more insurance companies jump into health, the health insurance market, uh, which would provide needed competition that would help drive down the cost of health insurance? <clears throat> so first, let's look at profits. A mid-2022 report from the National Association of Insurance Commissioners, referred to as NAIC, provides uh, some insight into the aggregate loss ratio for various policies. Now, it sounds a little complicated, but really this ratio just offers a rough estimate of the difference between what companies collect in premiums and what they pay out in claims. For comprehensive hospital and medical coverage between 2018 and 2022, the loss ratio ranged from 67% to 77%. So that means, splitting that, that range, about $72 was paid in claims for every 100 of income. So that meant there was $28 out of uh, every hundred dollars for the company uh, to pay its operating costs. Uh, loss ratios from Medicare are a little bit higher between 73% and 82%. So it's really to, important to note that the actual profit margins that the company gets, the bottom line, so to speak, is lower than these numbers suggest since the loss ratio, the $28 per every 100 that I referred to, doesn't account for that administration and overhead expenses. But nevertheless, it's evident that a considerable portion of premium dollars is finding its way uh, into the bottom line of the insurance industry. So, and, that, and that's not inherently bad. But what about competition? According to the Kaiser Foundation, there were 129 individual health insurance plans available on state health insurance exchanges in 2023. <clears throat> Compare that with the NAIC website that shows as of 2022, there were 3,639 licensed property and casualty insurance companies operating in the United States. What does that mean? That means there's one health insurance company for every 33 auto and homeowner companies. Why then are there comparatively so few health insurance companies as compared to property casualty companies? My research points to one major issue that sets the health insurance industry apart. It's more highly regulated and capital intensive than other types of insurance. What's that mean? It means it's really difficult 
for new companies to enter the health insurance market. Health insurance companies are subject to really extensive regulations at both the state and federal level. So these regulations, which cover everything from underwriting standards to pricing practices, uh, can cause complying with them to be really costly and time consuming. So as a result, the health insurance industry is relatively concentrated. There's only a small number of large companies controlling much of the market. The industry benefits from a relatively captive market, which is all of us who need insurance. And that uh, enables them to increase rates without significant fear that policyholders are going to drop their coverage or find it elsewhere because there's not much competition. So this concentration of health insurance uh, in 129 companies has been blamed for rising health insurance costs and has led to calls for reforms to make the market more competitive. Given the lobbying power of the existing companies, I think it seems unlikely that such reform is going to happen anytime soon. So despite these challenges, there are some new entrants into the health insurance market. These uh, newer companies use technology to streamline their operations, reduce costs, and they target niche markets, which would be something like young adults or small businesses. Really remains to be seen whether these new companies are going to be able to gather a significant market share but they do represent a potential challenge to the established players in the industry. And personally, I hope they succeed. Thanks for listening.